Hi. My name is Brooke, and I am back again to introduce a very useful technique, communicating between two separate applications using memory mapped files, in conjunction with standard Windows messaging techniques. Part of the operating system design is to isolate each running application in its own memory space so that the actions of one application does not affect or crash another. Over time, security issues have arisen due to hackers trying to patch or damage running applications, and as a consequence, the later versions of Windows have made access into running applications far more difficult for hackers to access. Fortunately for the programmer, who has control of the source code that they write, there is a sophisticated technique for communicating between applications that does not suffer the problems that hackers face, when they try and access a running executable file, that they did not write. The operating system provides a very fast and reliable technique, for making memory accessible across different applications. A memory mapped file, is memory that is supplied by the operating system, that two or more applications can write the correct code to both read and write to that memory, and data transfer occurs at the speed of memory read and write. I am going to hand you over to Billy, who has a working example of a memory mapped file application up and running. I gather he is a bit tied up at the moment so Addison will present the code for you. I have a working example up and running, that is a Windows UI and it is about as simple as you can write a create window type application. I am a bit tied up at the moment so I have asked Addison to present the code for you. Right, let's go. The following code is from Billy's example, so you can refer it directly to the example code. First we need to make three global variables in the uninitialized data section. The first is a 64-bit variable for a private message name, that is used as the return value for the register window message windows function. The following two are for the memory mapped file, one a handle, the other a pointer to the mapped memory. There is also a flag that is used to stop the sending instance from sending that private message to itself. This is written to the initialized data section set to zero. Next we register the windows message after the code entry point, so we have a message to both send and receive. Directly following is the MASM64 library procedure that creates the memory mapped file. In this example it is only an 8 kilobyte file, but in 64 bit you can make truly massive mapped files extending into gigabytes if the computer has enough memory. We now shift down to the windproc message handling with the WM command message processing that responds to either buttons or toolbar as well as menu messages. The flag is set so that the app sending the message does not send it to itself. The text to write to the memory mapped file is retrieved from the edit control and written directly to the memory mapped file. The following send message function uses the system wide global handle, hwind broadcast, so that the message can be received by an external app that is designed to listen for this message. When send message returns, the flag is set back to zero which allows normal operations with the private message processing. The private message processing in this example is very simple and works in much the same way as a WM command message. It uses a conditional test to make sure the flag is set to zero, then it writes the content of the mapped file to the second edit control. Among the great advantages of working directly with memory is you don't need any form of double copying or perform any conversions to use a low-level capacity like memory mapped files. You just write the data directly to the mapped file. I will now pass you back to Billy, as he has a security issue to explain. There is a security issue that would not affect most people, but it may affect a programmer who is releasing their software in the wild. With both the private message and the memory mapped file, in the example both texts used are easily found in something as simple as a hex editor. If it matters to you and if you want to prevent anyone from easily modifying your binary file, you can use more or less any characters you like apart from the ASCII zero. Having a string full of binary garbage makes the string much harder to find and is therefore harder to accurately modify. Fortunately neither function is fussy about the string data, as long as it is provided as a zero terminated string. The bottom line is there has never been a binary file that cannot be hacked but performing simple precautions raises the complexity level and will stop most from trying. That's all we have for you today, hope it helps to get you up to pace with this very useful capacity. Bye for now.